oh my god this game welcome to today's recap guys it is round five of the women's world chess championship and we have Lei Ting Jie with the white pieces and Zhu Wen Jun with the black pieces and today is going to be so exciting strap in i'm not going to spoil anything i am going to say though that we do get a decisive result and let's jump in all right so starting off we have same time control of 90 minutes and you have to make it to move 40. And then once you have move 40, you get another 30 minutes added onto your clock and 30 second bonus from move one. Whew. Okay. I'm so excited to show you guys this game. I was freaking out when the players were playing this. This is such a beautiful game. Okay, let's start. So we have E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and now... We've been seeing a lot of Rui Lopez's and they've been turning into Berlin's and today Lei decides to switch it up and we get Bishop C4, the Italian game. I really love this move actually, one, because I really like the Italian and two, because it can transpose into a lot of positions that I actually play myself. So I actually understand these positions a lot more than when they were playing the Rui Lopez. So it's just, you know, selfishly, I like this move. So Bishop C4, Knight F6, and now we get D3, Bishop C5 bringing out their bishop, you know, just developing castles and then d6. So beautiful structure from both. And now it's a choice for what um, white wants to do. There's a lot of plans in the Italian um, for both white and black, and it can get just like subtle differences can change the position, can change the plans. So there's a lot of things that could happen from here. We get c3 and then a5. The idea behind a5 is now white no longer has b4. And this move, though, does relinquish control of b5. So you get some drawbacks and some pros. So we get a5, bishop b3. Moving the bishop back, preparing either bishop a4 or bishop c2 in case of bishop e6 from black. So if black tries to trade, um, she won't have to trade anymore and she can move here or she can move here. So um, we also could have seen a4. We also could have seen knight bd2, but instead we see bishop b3, now we see castles. She could have decided to play bishop e6, and then we probably would have saw the bishop a4, um, but instead we see castles. Now we get rook e1. White wants to play d4 soon, but can't right now because black just has nice control over that square. So he can't right now, but that is an idea in the future for white is to try and play d4. So we get bishop a7. She's moving the bishop out of the way. Something else... She is an, that is an idea for black in these positions is just to go immediately knight g4 and if knight g4 attacking this pawn we get rook e2 king h8 h3 attacking the knight and then actually another idea here is instead of playing h3 you can play d4 which is the critical move here and shutting off the connection of the knight and the bishop to the f2 square bishop a7 and then this would have been the nice move but say she doesn't play d4 and she plays h3 instead we'd get now f5 H takes G4, F takes G4, Knight G5, and then G3. And with lots of pressure on white, black is pushing. And this is just really scary because look at this rook. Look at this bishop. And then this pawn. This is just ugh, really scary for white. So she probably didn't want to go into this. But it is something that she would have had to calculate um, prior to playing um, rookie one. So after rookie one, um, black did have the option to play knight g4 but she instead decides to play bishop a7 so bishop a7 and now h3 preventing the knight from coming to g4 and we get bishop e6 offering a trade she's like hey you want to trade and no trade no lays decides to keep the light squared bishop on the board and you might be thinking what is that light squared bishop doing why is it on c2 look at these pawns this is so ugly but actually White does want to push d4, so eventually that bishop is going to become a massive piece just later on in the game. It'll have a lot of potential, so for now it looks kind of ugly, but also look at that bishop on a7. That could also turn into an ugly piece, so it's actually not so bad. So bishop c2, h6, d4 now, saying, finally, I get to strike in the center, d4. e takes d4 is the only option because you're threatening this, and so she doesn't really want to go into this, so she takes... Now knight takes, and now bishop d7. Another option here for black is she can decide to play knight takes d4, c takes d4, d5, e5, and then knight e4, and knight c3. And this is still giving an advantage for white, though, so maybe that's why she decided to play bishop d7. Another idea after um, knight takes d4 is going to be d5 immediately, 
and now d5, knight takes e6, and you're taking that bishop, which black probably wants to keep, and then f takes e6, and look at this, though. The bishop and the rook work together now on the f file, and the advantage for white is kind of gone. So a more critical line for black would have been playing d5. Even though you do give up this bishop, this compensation is enough, and it would have been fine for black. But she doesn't decide to play d5. Instead, she decides to play a passive move in bishop d7. So we get bishop d7, and now bishop e3. Black is kind of just passive now, and white manages to play d4 and get some nice space and is very happy. There is so many plans in the opening that even just like the small nuances of playing h3 now or h3 before and allowing like knight g4, it gets pretty crazy. So white is happy to have won in the opening. So we get bishop e3, now knight e5. Another idea could have been rook e8. After rook e8, knight d2, protecting the e4 pawn, d5, Knight takes c6, though, and then after bishop takes c6, bishop takes a7, rook takes a7, and look at that rook. Now the rook is poor on a7, and it's going to have to spend another tempo later on having to reposition itself. e5, attacking the knight, knight to e4, and then we're going to get, instead of also, instead of knight e4, if she would have played like knight d7, and now the bishop on c2 is actually a beautiful bishop, and whereas before it was being blocked by all those pawns and just very quickly the position can change it and it can turn into a beast so doesn't really like that so instead knight e4 trying to block off the bishop but now you're gonna get knight takes e4 d takes e4 bishop takes e4 queen takes d1 rook a takes d1 and now if you think you can win that pawn on uh, e5 with rook takes e5 that's actually gonna be a blunder because you have the beautiful bishop h7 check snapping off the rook and this would have been waiting for white so she can't go into this Instead, she decides to play knight e5. We get knight d2, and now, oof, this is very spicy. Another idea you might be thinking of, what happens after f4 instead of knight d2? So after f4, you're going to get knight c4, attacking the dark squared bishop and the pawn on b2. So trying to defend the dark squared bishop, because you really want to keep that piece, is going to be bishop f2, knight takes b2, queen e2, c5, and now this is just getting incredibly spicy. And then knight f3, and this is just not really ideal for white. So she didn't want to go into this. Instead, she decides to play just knight d2, um, developing her pieces, trying to put more pressure, and she doesn't have to go for f4 immediately. Now, for black, she decides to play c5, which is a huge committal move. The bishop on a7 is now terrible, and the d6 pawn is backwards. Instead of playing c5 immediately, she also could have thought of playing knight g6, and then after knight g6, f4, this would weaken the uh, g1 to h7 diagonal, or the a7 diagonal for white, and now c5 would be really strong for black, because with c5, you're not going to get knight 4 to f3, bishop c6, f5, and attacking that knight, knight e7 and now bishop f2 and this is just a super tactical position the bishop's probably going to come over to h4 and this still has an advantage for white so it was just another idea for black to play um, knight g6 prior to playing c5 but okay we get c5 immediately and now same idea knight 4 to f3 and black has 47 minutes and white has 55 minutes so pretty much the same amount of time we get bishop c6 which Oh my goodness. She also could have played knight takes f3 check, but then we get knight takes f3 and now bishop c6 now and black puts, puts pressure on d5. So this was also another idea for her. The immediate a4 actually doesn't really work too well because after a4, knight takes e5, d takes e5, now bishop takes a4, and this just doesn't really work that well for uh, black, so she wasn't able to do this. She decides to play knight c6 immediately and we get knight takes e5, d takes e5, and now a4 just saying, hey... I'm going to get control of the b5 square and you're not going to be able to push your pawn any further and this is going to look really nice. Um, if she would have played knight c4 immediately, this is also a nice idea of just, you know, aiming at both of these pawns, but mainly the e5 pawn. This is not a sack as white will be able to win a different pawn um, eventually, uh, whether that be h6 or e5. Because after bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e5, we have um, rook e8. And now here, this is still winning for um, white. Or not winning, but it has a nice advantage. 
Also, she doesn't even have to take on e5. Um, say she decides to play bishop takes h6. And now if you take back, you're going to play rook takes e4. And now this is just really nice for white. Um, she gets her pawn back and the position is just crazy. The king is super drafty. And so this would have been really nice for white as well. But we instead see a4. And now after a4, queen e7. Black's bishop on a7 is still bad, and white has control over the b5 square, so that is why white has the advantage, basically. So we now get queen e2, and we then get rook f to d8. Black can't break through with the rooks on the d-file, as white is just controlling so many squares in the center. Um, and black has weak squares because her pawns are pushed so far forward that she's creating holes in her position. So we get rook f to d8, rook e, d1. Bishop b8, and now uh, white has a choice. There are tactics in the air now that the rooks are disconnected with the bishop moving back to b8. So the idea here would then be knight to f1. We get a different move in the game, but I just want to walk you guys through what happens after knight f1. After knight f1, say she decides to play bishop c7, trying to reposition her bishop. We get knight g3, b6, knight f5, queen e6, queen f3, Rook takes d1 and we trade rooks. Rook to d8, offering another trade. Say we trade rooks again. Now we get queen g3. And then after g6, the pawn on h6 is hanging, so you would take it. King f8. And this is just really nice for white. Another idea after, say, she doesn't want to play bishop c7 here. After knight f1, she says she wants to play knight takes e4. This is actually a huge blunder because now we're going to get bishop takes e4. And then um, say we get now bishop takes, bishop takes c5, attacking the queen. And if you get rook takes uh, d1, you would get rook takes d1. You don't even need to take the queen because then you're going to get queen takes c5. And now rook d8 check, king h7, queen takes e4 check, g6, queen takes b7. And this is just completely winning for white. And after knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, say she doesn't want to take the bishop immediately and she wants to just trade rooks. This is basically the same thing. And it's still going to be winning for white because you're going to get rook takes d1, rook takes d1, bishop takes e4, bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, and then rook d8 check, king h7, and the same idea. So it really didn't matter which way she decides to take. Um, this still would have been just completely winning for white. So she's not able to play knight takes e4. Um, instead, she would have had to do something different, like uh, bishop c7. She doesn't play knight f1 in the game. We see after bishop b8, uh, we see queen c4 instead, which is still a really nice move. And then we get b6, b4. And now at the option for black, what does she want to do? Does she want to move her bishop to d6 to defend that pawn? Does she want to do something else? After bishop d6, b5, bishop b7. Now there is no a5 break for white. So this was another possibility um, because everything is pretty much locked on the queen side. But instead, after b4, Zhu decides to take a takes b4. And now c takes b4, bishop d6 with the same type of idea, but throwing in that a takes b4 first. Now b5 though and bishop d7, and this is just a huge advantage for white. Now we get queen c3, and now bishop e6, trying to control the c4 square. Uh, black has 36 minutes, and white has 30, so we're still within the same time realm uh, for time. <laughs> time realm for time. Now we get knight c4, and another idea could have been just a5 breaking through, getting a passed pawn. Um, but she decides to do knight c4, just calmly repositioning her pieces, bettering her position, taking her time. So knight c4, bishop takes c4, and now queen takes c4. After queen takes c4, the idea is to bring the bishop to b3 and just create a battery going down the um, this diagonal. Now Zhu has to decide what she wants to do. She can play bishop c7, and after bishop c7, bishop b3, rook takes d1, rook takes, rook d8, offering another trade, and say she takes again. Um, also, she can't take like this, because after this, you get queen takes f7, so she has to take with the bishop. And then you would get a5, trying to create that pass b pawn, and say she doesn't want to take. She's like, oh god, I can't take, because then you're going to get a pass b pawn, knight d7, and now you're going to get a6, and this is just completely burning for white. So another beautiful idea, um, but she doesn't have to go into this. Instead, she decides to play, instead of bishop c7, she decides to play knight e8, which the idea is clear. She's trying to bring her knight over this way. And so we get bishop b3, same idea. Now white has less than 20 minutes, though, and Zhu has about 37 minutes. So she plays bishop b3, 
And another idea, instead of playing bishop b3 immediately, is just playing a5. And now after a5, we get b takes a5. And now b6, preventing the knight from coming to c7. So just a prophylactic move. And then say queen b7, uh, rook a b1, and bringing the bishop over to a4. And this is just a really nice advantage for white with that b pawn just trying to charge through. So we don't see a5, though. Instead, we see bishop b3. Now we get knight c7 with the same idea, and now queen c2. She had another idea where she could have just played queen c3, which doesn't allow black a tempo later on via knight e6, bishop d5, attacking the rook. And now um, if bishop takes e6 instead, you get queen takes e6 and now a5, and this is still really nice for white. But okay, what happens if she doesn't want to take the knight and the bishop just goes to d5? We get bishop d5, knight to d4, and now if you want to take on a8, this is actually a huge blunder because of knight e2. So she wouldn't be able to play it like this. She would have to do something different, but this is still a really clear advantage for white. And okay, this is the position on the live board. Say she doesn't want to play queen c3. Instead, she wants to play queen e2. This is also a really nice idea because we get knight e6 with the same type of plan. Queen g4, though, queen f6, bishop d5, rook a7, getting out of the way. Now a5, bishop c7, and this is just completely winning for white. So this was another plan that Lei could have played with queen e2, but she instead decides to play queen c2, which is totally fine as well. Still has a nice advantage. We get knight e6 with the same idea. You can see this knight just has to go over here. This was Zhu's plan of bringing the knight to e8 and then c7 and now e6. We get knight e6 and now she has, a, she has to think. What does she want to do? Does she want to trade? Does she want to bring her bishop to d5? If she trades with bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, rook d5, bishop c7, offering a trade of rooks now. And if you play rook ad1, rook takes d5, trying to trade things off. Rook takes d5, rook d8 saying, let's trade again. No, 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 a5. And now after rook takes, e takes, queen takes, Unfortunately, you're going to get a6, and this is just completely winning for white. And now say black plays like, this is still completely winning, but say black just plays a slow move, like say like, for example, h5, um, a7, queen b7, queen a4, saying that is unfortunately going to promote, my friend. And if you try and block with the queen, you're going to get queen a6, g6. This is just like, you know, she has nothing else. It doesn't even matter what she plays. Bishop takes c5. And this is the most beautiful move because when the pawn takes, you push, attack the bishop. And this is such a pretty line that is just completely winning for white. Um, I was watching the commentary today and Yovanka Hauska and Alexander Kostinyuk were the commentators and they came up with this line and I just thought this was really pretty. I wanted to show you guys. But she doesn't have to go into this. She doesn't have to play... Um, all of these forcing moves she can instead decide to play something else um like she wouldn't have to play h5 like that's just a slow move but even here this is still just completely winning for white so black probably doesn't want to trade off all those rooks and wants to keep more pieces on the board um but that would this is what would have happened after um playing like this so she wasn't able to play like this um bringing the rook over is just a mistake but even here this is still winning for white so you can just see that white has a massive advantage but she doesn't decide to trade the bishop for the knight she instead decides to play bishop d5, which is a great move. We have now rook ab8 getting out of the way. And then another choice, what does Lei want to play? Does she want to play, say, what happens after queen c4? Bringing the queen in to a really nice square. We would get now knight d4, a5, b takes a5, rook takes a5. And now you're going to bring the other rook to the a file and, and the rooks are going to come in and they have a beautiful uh, file to go down. Then bishop c7. Rook a7, knight takes b5, winning the pawn, but you get bishop takes c5, winning this pawn. And now say what happens after queen e8, getting out of the way. And now the mistake, this is a huge mistake. Uh, white would actually be losing after bishop takes f7 because if queen takes f7 and rook takes d8, rook takes d8, queen takes b5, this is just completely now winning for black. So you can see how um, you can go a little bit wrong in this because now after queen takes b5, they have rook d1 check, king h2, and now queen f4 check. And the queen is going to come in and black pieces are going to be able to reposition themselves and be very happy. So you can see how you can go wrong pretty easily with bishop takes f7. So she wouldn't have to play this. She would play something else like maybe like rook a6. Um, and move on. And this would still be a nice advantage for white. So she doesn't decide to play queen c4, though. She decides to just, you know what? 
let's just take i changed my mind now that your rook's on a different file than the a file and you moved over with my threat i'm actually going to change my mind and i'm just going to take your knight so bishop takes e6 queen takes e6 and now rook d5 and lay has about 13 minutes and Zhu has 30 minutes so a little bit of a time advantage but it is move 31 so she's not really in too much time trouble she has to make another nine moves to hit move 40 within 13 minutes which she's very capable of doing so it's not too stressful but there is a little bit of a time advantage for Jew. so now we get rook d5 bishop e7 rook a d1 doubling up on the file rook takes d5 rook takes d5 and now the option for black what does she want to do she has to come up with a plan white still has a slight advantage and she has to come up with something so say she decides to play uh, rook d8 the advantage is now slowly creeping up for white because now say after she decides to trade with rook takes d8 bishop takes a5 you can see this a5 idea is just always the pressure in the position against black and that is what white is pushing for in a lot of these positions that is her whole advantage is being able to play a5 so after a5, b takes a5, queen takes c5, saying, I'm going to push that b pawn down the board. What are you going to do? a4, b6, a3, b7, a2, b8, and then a1 to queen does come up with a um, check. But can you imagine this? Four queens on the board. That's crazy. But this is still really nice for white. So and white would still have the advantage here, even with having four queens on the board. And this would just get super messy. Um, but instead, she doesn't have to take on d8. Say just she decides to play just queen d3, um, just defending. Then you'd get rook takes d5, queen takes, queen takes, e takes, bishop d6, blocking the pawn from being able to push. But now you're still going to get a5. a5 is so nice here. b takes, b6, a4, and a4 is saying like, oh, we're just going to run. Okay, we're just going to run. This is actually completely lost for black. She doesn't have to play... Um, a4 but if she decides to play like c4 the game is probably just going to be a drop you have to be really accurate but say she decides to just push her a pawn a4 b7 a3 bishop takes c5 is the critical move here because now after a2 bishop takes d6 a1 promoting to queen and then king h2 and unfortunately the bishop is going to be able to defend the b8 square and the pawn's going to be able to promote and this would be completely winning for white even though you get to promote first so this is just a cute little variation i wanted to show you guys um if she happened to play um a4 here this would have just been completely lost so instead we see we don't see rook d8 we see rook a8 saying i'm gonna go back over to that file because i know a5 is coming and i know i need to have some sort of type of control on this file so we get bishop d2 a really nice move and now we get king f8 bishop c3 f6 queen b3 and she's basically threatening rook d8 here winning the queen so uh black has to be able to defend she just moves her queen out of the way queen c8 queen c4 and lay is playing super quickly and has 13 minutes versus Zhu, who has 12 minutes lay is just like blitzing out these moves and now we get after queen c4 queen e8 Another idea could have been what happens after rook a7, and now say a5 trying to push, b takes, b6 attacking the rook, rook b7, and then bishop takes a5, and this is still a really nice advantage for white. And so this was also another idea if what happens after rook a7, but she decides to play queen e8 instead, and now we get g3. And this is actually just, this is such a nice move. This is such a nice move. She's saying, I don't need to play a5 you know a5 doesn't work yet actually because after a5 we get b takes a5 b6 queen c6 f4 e takes f4 and now e5 and this is just actually a draw so she actually a5 doesn't work in this position if she would have played a5 she says hey i'm going to reposition my pieces going to safeguard my king slowly improve and then i'm going to play a5 i don't need to play it here it's just holding the tension being very patient and i really like this so this is also move 38 and they have to hit move 40 for an extra 30 minutes so we get g3 queen c8 saying you know what i'll, I'll just go back like whatever and then king g2 just improving her position before pushing a5 we get queen e8 saying you know what i'm just gonna go back i don't really know um now she plays h4 and this is move 40 she has hit time control and now we get from black we get h5 
And after h5, we get bishop d2. And this is such a pretty move. The bishop is so flexible, covering a5. And now also looking at this side of the board with being able to support a potential f4 and also being able to move to bishop e3, being able to look this way. This is just a really nice move. So really nice on lay. So we get bishop d2, rook b8. She can't play queen c8 again because now after queen c8, you're going to get a5. And a5 actually is just completely winning because of b takes and now bishop e3 oh it's so good bishop e3 and now if she plays rook b8 this is just completely winning for white because she's going to be able to play rook takes c5 and this is just so nice and so even if say like she decides to play like this this actually is just uh completely lost for black because she would have to play um, queen takes c5. If she doesn't play queen takes c5, if black just moves their king out of the way instead of taking the bishop, say you go here, now it's just going to be mate in three with queen g8 check, king d7, and then queen takes g7 check, king d8, or king d8, king e8, whatever, it doesn't matter. If king e8, and then we're going to get queen e7 mate. So she's not allowed to play queen c8. She has to now play rook b8. And after rook b8, white just has a really nice advantage because we're going to get now f4. Oh, it's so good. F4. And now she's trying to break through. She's opening up the position saying, you know what? I don't even need to play a5 yet. F4. Oh, it's so nice. Now e takes f4. Bishop takes f4. Rook b7. Getting out of the way of the bishop. Queen e2. Attacking the h pawn with the rook and the queen. And this is the only move for to keep the advantage. And she finds it. It's so good. So we get queen e2 and now g6, the only move to protect that pawn. And now it's 12 minutes and counting for Lei to make a move. She doesn't have a lot of time, but we're on move 44 and she has a clear advantage. Now we get e5. Oh my God. Just cracking open the position. So nice. This move is so nice. Um, and now it's up to Zhu to, to decide what she wants to do. This is such a nice position though for um white that it's gonna be really hard for her to find a move say she wants to play queen f7 after queen f7 unfortunately e6 attacking the queen and now queen e8 queen e4 attacking so much stuff uh say you have to play like rook a7 and now rook d7 and this is just killer if you want to trade rook takes d7 you actually aren't gonna trade yet you're gonna play bishop h6 and now after king g8 you get now e takes d7 and if queen takes unfortunately it's gonna be mate in two because of queen takes g6 king h8 and then queen g7 mate so this wouldn't have been possible and she would have just had this really nice um taking over here and then say you have to play like queen f7 what am i gonna do i need to protect against me i also need to get out of the way but i need to protect this pawn like oh my god what am i gonna do a5 and now a5 works and this is just so nice for white completely winning position she wouldn't have been able to go through this so queen f7 doesn't work what am i gonna do what about let's say rook d7 trying to offer a trade of rooks so now we would get not even trading rooks queen f3 just saying you know what i don't even care I don't care. Queen f3. Boom. And white actually can go wrong here. What happens if she plays queen d3? This is actually a huge blunder because of queen a8. And the rook and the queen are going to win this rook because the queen is pinning the rook to the king. And so you can actually go really wrong here with playing queen d3. So queen d3 doesn't work. She just plays the nice queen f3. And now if rook takes d5, queen takes d5, f takes e5, and now this would actually just be mate in one with bishop h6. So that wouldn't work. She would have to play something else. And this is just completely winning for uh, white. So she decides to do something else. Also, what happens here if she takes on f takes e5? You're just going to get rook takes e5 and the this king is just super unsafe and there's a lot of threats in the air and this is completely winning for white. So we get e5 and she decides to play queen a8 saying, you know what? Same idea of being able to bring the rook over to, um, you know, d7 and white has to find an idea. She decides, you know, I'm not going to play queen d3 because it's the same idea of playing this. So that doesn't work or of not d3, d2, d3, either one of these doesn't work because of this move. So, and black would win the rook. So instead she plays queen f3 and now f5, rook d7, and Lei is winning. We get rook a7 and now queen takes a8, rook takes a8, e6 with under a minute and Zhu still hasn't played. She has to play something, but she knows that this position is just lost and she plays rook takes a4 
And another idea could have been trying to fight with C4, trying to bring, you know, other resources to the party. C4, Rook B7, trying to win the B pawn. Bishop C5, trying to block off the contact from the C pawn from White being able to win that C pawn. So now she would, though, play Bishop H6 check, King G8, Rook G7 check, King H8, and then Rook C7, Rook E8, Rook C6, going to win something on that side of the board. Now Bishop D4, A5. A5 again is just so nice because now B takes, B6, Bishop takes, Rook takes, and this is just completely winning for white. They're just going to win, um, be able to snatch up those pawns. You can't try and push because the rook is going to be able to um, win them as well as the bishop is going to be able to defend because you're just up a piece. And this just would have been completely winning for white as well. So C4 would have been another way of trying to fight um, and just push, but it still is completely winning for white. Instead, we see her play rook takes A4, rook B7, attacking the B pawn, and now threatening bishop E5. Or bishop h6 with mate coming. Ju decides, you know, I know this is lost, but I'm going to keep playing. She plays rook a8, defending the back rank. If she would have played, say, like, what happens after uh, rook c4? After rook c4, though, rook b8 check. And then bishop d8, rook takes d8 check. And this is just going to be super messy. She doesn't even need to play uh, rook takes. She can just play the immediate bishop b6. And then the king is still going to have to come this way. Say, if the king comes over here, you're just going to get now e7. And you're going to win that bishop. So... This is just completely lost. So instead, we see rook a8 trying to defend the back rank, but she knows this is completely lost still. We get rook takes b6, c4, rook c6, bishop d8, b6, rook a2, you know, throwing in one of the last few checks that she has, king f3, and Zhu is just playing on increment at this point. We get rook b2, rook c8 attacking the bishop, rook b3 check, one of the only ones left, king e2, Rook takes b6, and now she just gives up the bishop because she knows that um, she's it's basically lost. Because if she decides to defend the bishop with, say, like, king over here, it's actually just going to... It's going to be made eventually. You're going to get bishop g5 um, and eventually win the bishop. So this wouldn't work. Um, even after, say, like, rook d3, now you get e7. So you're still going to win the bishop. So she decides to just take the pawn. Rook takes b6. Rook takes d8, check. King e7. Rook c8. Rook takes e6, check, king d2, and she's going to go win that c pawn. Rook e4, king c3, king f7, rook takes c4, rook e8, rook c7, check, king f6, bishop g5, check, king e5. And unfortunately, all of black's pawns are on light squares, and white has a dark squared bishop, and there's no way of being able to make progress, and... Fortunately, the bishop actually covers the h8 square um, because it's the same color. So we're going to see how that turns into effect. After rook e7, she gets to trade off the rooks. And now she resigned. And she resigns because she's not scared of f4. Um, Lay isn't because white has a dark squared bishop. And after g takes, king takes, king d4, white is going to walk their king over to the corner. And you're going to get, say, what happens after g5? Bishop takes... King f5, king d5, king g6, king e6, king g7, trying to stay in the corner, but white is going to be able to mate you because bishop e7, king g8, king f6, and now king h8, and white is going to go win this pawn, and this is just a known win for white. If the bishop was an opposite color, if it was a light squared bishop, this would actually be a draw, but it's not, and in this position, Zhu resigned. Insane! I know, I just, crazy game, we get a decisive result, Lei Tingzhi with the white pieces wins the match, and it is now 3-2 to two, everybody. This game was insane, I enjoyed every single minute of it, I hope you guys did too. We saw her switch it up, no Rui Lopez, we get an Italian, and it gets super tactical, Ju just played a little bit too passive, and Lei was able to put on the pressure, keep the advantage throughout the whole entire game, and win with the white pieces. And now it is a mismatched amount of points, y'all. We have three to two and Zhu has to strike back. So I love not seeing draw after draw after draw. Even though the draws in the past have been fighting draws every single game, it's really fun to see a decisive result because now Zhu has to strike back to be able to stay in it. So will we see that tomorrow in round six? Who knows? I am so excited. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. This was insane. This game was insane. I loved every single minute of it. I'm so happy for Lei. 
can you guys tell that I'm rooting for Lay? I'm sorry, but I am. I don't know. It's just something about an underdog. I'm sorry. I know Ju and Jude is like amazing and she's a three time, you know, winner of the championship, but I just, you know, I root for an underdog. And I also really like watching Lay play. She's super uh, fun to watch as just a viewer. Like she's very, she wears her heart on her sleeve and it's fun to see her play. So I will see you guys in tomorrow's video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.